Well, hello everybody. My name is Eileen Neuer and today we will be talking about layers. So essentially it's how to create distinctive um, and interesting little sections in a painting um, by using all different, um, I guess, unexpected colors and um, putting them in a way that really surprises the audience. So how I always start with um, a painting is actually to do a couple of rough outlines. I do have a, um, I like to start off with a photo or just some point of inspiration. I've just picked out this one. Um, the finished painting will probably look nothing like that, but I just like to have some st starting point. So I'm just going to start off with putting in some darks and then after that, I'm going to be um, showing how to um, kind of build depth in. So the way that I paint, you've probably noticed by now, is a little, it's a lot more lackadaisical than how um, a lot of artists take things. I like to um, kind of just see how I go. So I know this doesn't look like anything special right now. It kind of takes a while and even if you do a painting and you might not like it in the end but that's totally okay. So what really matters is just how you paint if you're enjoying that process. Okay. So I've got like, I've got my darks in um, and what I'm going to be doing now is kind of adding colors that are a little bit more extreme than what I intend for the final product. I just love putting really strong colors underneath and then overlaying that with more subdued colors. Then like when you do that, you have this um, really lovely surprise where tiny little hints of the bright color comes through. So I guess what I'll do is um, start off with some warms down here. So I've got my magenta and I've got some yellow and I forgot to mention that I, I like starting off when I paint using um, uh, like a mid-tone. So this is just a uh, red color with uh, burnt sienna. Um, you can start with any mid-tone. Uh, I just happen to really like warm, warm colors because I feel like, especially when you have a painting that's got a lot of blue in it, that having a warm under color really just allows that to stand out. And having a cool sky can be a little bit too, too cool. Whereas when you have that red underneath, it just adds that pow. Okay. So all I'm doing is different variations of yellow and um, oranges and yellows and Try not to worry too much right now about what it is that you're putting on the canvas. When you um, are getting closer towards the end, then you can really think more about the layout and all that. But right now, when I start the painting, I just like to know, you know, that however it turns out, it's okay and you don't need to worry so much about making it look perfect. So honestly, there's no such thing. So. I'm kind of getting there. Now I'm gonna vary it, maybe add some pinks. Even though this, I know it's a surprise because this does not have pinks, but if you were to look at the very top, but. I like to use a lot of creative license. 
when I paint. And by adding that pink, I'm going to be putting blue on the top, but right now it just really brings out the warmth. So one of the little, um, there are different tricks in painting to make a painting feel more cohesive. And one of them that I think is nice is thinking about round shapes. So I'm moving, I've started here and I'm kind of working my way out and I'm using color throughout the painting. So I'm giving it a chance, even if it's mostly pinks up here, I wanna give a chance for it to be kind of hinted down below as well. Okay, now I'm going to add just a diff another kind of pink. I know a lot of people like to um, pre-mix their own colors instead of using um, the ones that already come pre-mixed. I like to use a combination because um, when you are painting, especially acrylic, it dries so fast that I like to be able to have the pre-mixed available because that way I'm not spending all day mixing, mixing colors and, and having them dry out on me. So right now what I'm doing is just to create a bit of drama around the trees. I'm making it a little bit brighter around them. So, because I'm impatient right now, some of the colors are all kind of mixing through because I haven't waited for them to dry, but that's okay. Starting to get a semblance of color on the page. Okay, now let's put some reds. Through here. So what we want is, this is going to dry, and then we're just going to keep on building on it. In a strange way, the accidents are what kind of makes the painting exciting. So you, you might think, oh, what was I doing over there? But actually, it's a good thing. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to finish the painting in this tutorial because 20 minutes is really fast to be doing a painting. It definitely takes me longer than that usually. But at least you'll be able to see the build up. Okay. I'm gonna kind of add in a bit of lighter colors on the trees because obviously trees aren't usually this black. And I will be adding greens in that too. Okay. So. I'm gonna add in some clouds. Let's see, did that dry off? It's still a little bit wet. I'm gonna pause it to give it a chance to dry. Okay, so this has pretty much dried, mostly. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just add in, add in the clouds. Um, clouds are never exactly fully white. There's usually gradations of 
grays and purples and so I'm going to get some of those shapes in. Okay. We can always adjust that later as well if we're not happy with the positioning. I'm going to add some wider whites as well to it. So the next part that we're going to do, just going to add in some of the lights on the actual trees themselves. And what have we got? Well, this one's supposed to be connected that way. And... Funny angles going around. Okay. So what we're going to do now, my favorite part, is the um, building on the next layer for the sky. So we're going to be covering up all this red now. <laughs> but it's really fun. Let's just make a nice blue. Okay. So something I like to do with the sky is to vary the um, the direction of the brush strokes. Um, otherwise, it can get a little bit too um, monotonous. I'm just going to start off with, start off at the bottom. Okay, I definitely didn't wait long enough over there, so we're going to have to fix that later. Oh, well, you can see how impatience sometimes does not work in favour. So I'm trying to go a little bit more blue as I get higher. And as I'm going, I'm thinking about where the movement is in the sky. Where do I want to see my the viewer's eyes travel? Okay. Maybe I've gone a little too dark over there. Let's um, track that back a little. I'm sorry you can hear my dog barking in the background. So we're starting to see more semblance of that original picture I showed you. And um, something I like to do when I get further, further up is to really show that 
dynamic change in the sky is I like to add magenta to the blue. It kind of gives it this, um, it kind of gives it this deep, luscious, dark color. You can see here what I mean. Beautiful, delicious color. You can even vary it so you could have bits of um, purple in there. Nobody says the sky has to be blue, right? In art, anyway. <laughs> So I'm not sure if you can tell, I'm not intending to absolutely cover up everything that I had um, originally painted on. I'm trying to show there's tiny little glimpses of it. Okay. And we are running out of light. And after you watch this video, if you have particular questions, please let me know if there's something you'd like me to focus on. Because I am taking a stab in the dark on what people might be interested in as I'm painting. But, I mean, you could be really wanting something else, some other topic, not this. So, let me know. Okay, I know it's like higgledy piggledy, but sometimes speed painting is just a really great exercise. So if you're only going to allow yourself 20 to 30 minutes to do a painting, I just really find that time, that time restriction to be helpful actually. And it kind of takes the intimidation out of painting as well. So now I'm going to start moving further down um, and as you can see I don't have any blues yet down below over here and I, I like to even out the painting. So even though it sounds strange to have blue in a landscape, I like to have tiny little hints of it because it just gives it, your eyes a chance to kind of balance out. Okay. So now I'm going to bring the, um, the sky, that pale, um, it's going to be like a nice turquoise color. I'm going to bring that down, all the way down to the horizon, and then I'll bring in that yellow. You can see I go through a lot of paint. <laughs> If you were doing one little painting, but that's that's how I work. <laughs> okay, actually, I have another turquoise color I really like. Just this one. Okay. So. It's like a really delicious turquoise now. I guess I'm a little strange. I think of paint as um, kind of like food. Like I get really excited. It's almost like it's a tasty color when I when I make a color that I'm really happy with. <laughs> try to have the light come through the trees. Getting a little closer. And we're going to build on those trees real soon anyway. But this is just so some of that light can get through. 
Okay, now I'm going to do a really pale colour and then move into the warm. Okay, so let's get some more white on there. So what I'm trying to do here is explain a procedure, but this is actually not necessarily how I do things for my paintings. Usually I just put the music on and I just go for it. I'm not necessarily thinking of it as a procedure. Um, and because of that, I end up having such really fun, different um, experiments that come out of it. But for the sake of this video, I'm trying to show it in a procedural sort of way. Okay, we're getting closer to the bottom of the horizon. So what I'm going to do now is add some really, it's going to be like a whitish yellow. And I know the trees look really funky right now, but just bear with me on that. Getting down right down to the bottom of the horizon. If we wanted, we could add some variation, maybe it's a suggestion of trees in the background in the distance. Okay, so you can see now that I've added the light down here, I really want to move that over here as well. So there's some like reflection of that in the, um, in the ground. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is building up the trees. Okay, so we're going to build up those trees so they don't look so quite so unrealistic. Um, because it's not normal for trees to just be completely black. So I'm just trying to make a kind of dull green. Okay. Now, all I'm doing is adding it to the edges because little little spots around I mean for the most part this is a silhouette but you'll still be able to see some of the light come through okay and then we're just going to be adding more whites to that so what kind of in a way it kind of looks like it'll blur into the landscape. Okay. Okay, I haven't decided yet if that's finished the tree section, but in the meantime, let's just work on this little bottom section. So what I'm going to be doing is to build it up, I want to add a lot more reds and reds and oranges. 
because this painting is starting to look extremely cool. I want to warm it up a bit. So just adding in more warmth. Maybe some slightly lighter sections too. Swing a little bit dark there. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is just like little finishing touches. So if you notice that there's a section of the painting that needs some a bit of work. For me, I want to get rid of that slightly greeny part of the sky, um, make it a little bit more blue. Um, that was when I was too impatient to wait. Oh, sorry about my dogs again. Okay. So apart from covering that, I'm just going to call it a day with this painting. And maybe eventually I'll add more to it, but for now, I am going to call that done. So thank you for joining me and we have more videos coming up so just keep an eye out. If you have any particular content you'd like me to cover just let me know and I'd love to um, I'd love to hear from you. So thank you very much and yeah for joining me on doing this this little painting here. All right. Thanks. Bye.